Hello and welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. My name is John Bloom. I'm a lead consultant at Pragmatic Works Consulting, and I want to talk today about data governance. This is actually the second in a series of two of the data governance videos for Azure Every Day. So let's go ahead and get started. A little bit about me. I started with computers professionally in 96 as a programmer, report writer, and architect. I've worked in the Azure Stack Microsoft Business Intelligence, the Big Data Hadoop, and Power BI, and a variety of other reporting tools. I started with computers in 1983 as a kid, and I've been consulting professionally for two, since 2014, and I have the side business Bloom Consulting since 2000. I've worked since 2018 for Pragmatic Works Consultant as a lead consultant. So this is the second in a series of data governance. Today I'd like to talk about the master data management, which is a component of the data governance, and it's typically used in a modern data warehouse so that we could have a trusted and accurate data because everybody needs accurate data to report on to manage the business to grow sales reduce cost and streamline processes it's basically a framework and we use this framework uh, master data management to store the data in a logical way so that it's trustable we can trust it and we streamline some of the processes the sharing of the data among personnel and departments we remove duplicates we standardize the data we incorporate rules to eliminate incorrect data, and we create an authoritative source of master data. There's a lot of times, for example, the, the, the city St. Petersburg can be spelled about 28 different ways, St. Pete, St. Petersburg, S-A-N-A-I-N-T, S-T period. So we use um, this master data management to govern some of that. Now, in Microsoft world, for MSBI, the business intelligence stack, the on-premise version anyway, we have Master Data Services, MDS for short, and it's comprised of a standalone web server, a database for storing the master records, and it allows users to connect uh, either through Excel or the web portal, and it allows them to store key information, master data information that may change over time, but we need a single repository to maintain it. Uh, we can also access it through store procedures and automate through our integration services. It's a great tool. I used it on my last project. So within this, it, it's it comes with the 2000. It comes with SQL Server, but the version we use was the 2019, and it's short MDS, and it can be configured for any domain, uh, products, accounts, and customers, and it basically includes hierarchies. You know, any hierarchy could be like country, state, city zip code that, that's a natural hierarchy but we can also have custom hierarchies you know uh, based on the specific organization uh, for different reasons uh, we also have granular security so we can apply uh, certain models to specific users and we can also audit trail so you know a lot of times things get changed and nobody knows how it happened well now we have a an audit trail to say oh this person changed this particular column of this model uh, on this date and this is the old version and this is the new version and we can also uh, incorporate some of the business rules within the master data services basically within the MDS framework we have models and a model you can think of as a database and a model can have entities entities you can think of tables so that's pretty much the hierarchy there and an entity contains a specific set of data upon ingestion can be maintained and supported by the business via the data steward or an IT developer or what have you but like I said you can lock down the permissions and they can only access certain stuff and they can only modify certain stuff some is read only and some is updatable and some is deletable and the nice thing at least on the last project it offloaded some of the work of the report writer a lot of times in the past uh, a user would call in and, and request a change the the programmer the report developer would have to stop what they're doing make the change have it verified it it, it disrupted the flow it, you know uh, so now we can offload as one of the benefits we can offload some of that maintenance to the data steward which is part of the data governance framework and they can do that in Excel. Excel has a nice plugin for MDS. You just click on the button, connect. All of a sudden, you're looking at the model, the entity, and then it shows up in Excel. Uh, the color coordinated. If you make a change, uh, the color changes, and you can publish it back to the server, and it's instant. The, the changes reflect instant. Now, however, keep in mind that if your ETL process runs at midnight, it's not going to reflect that change until that time. And it's tracked for audit purposes, which is a great feature. I know the last client really enjoyed that function. Another component of the Microsoft Business Intelligence stack is the DQS, which is Data Quality Services. And it's been around for a while, 
and it's a lot of times you want to clean up your data for enrichment standardization and deduplicate your data as well as you know you can call third-party web services to clean up your data for example addresses and such another key component is the data dictionaries we like to store perhaps the tables the fields the field type and the description a lot of times what we do is we create these things called uh, extended properties so you can execute this command and it'll store the information it's not viewable unless you know where to dig for it but you can store this in a table and throw a power bi report on top of it and that is available on the portal power bi portal so that self-service users can go in there and do searches and such that's so that's a custom solution that we've implemented in the past there's also in azure we have what's known as the azure data catalog which is a fully managed cloud service it's pretty nice it's been around for a while it lets users discover the data sources they need to understand the data sources um, there's a IDE for it that you can massage the data and set things up uh, there's also I've seen other places that uh, other vendors that have AI built into it so it'll go and scrape all the databases in your infrastructure and it'll store that information as well um, I can't say that for data catalog but it, it is one of the features it's becoming more popular and uh, I strongly recommend the data catalog or some equivalent to maintain some of that data dictionary single source of the truth you can leverage it it has a lot of uh, value add so for data to become an asset it must be secured anytime we think of data we think of security because the data can live in multiple places it lives in the source you bring it into raw of your data warehouse it moves to stage it moves to your enterprise data warehouse and then it moves to your tabular model perhaps and then in your power bi so the data is sitting in six different places so you really need to think through the security of, of where to apply the permissions and how also your backups and in the cloud so the the nice thing is microsoft offers a tremendous amount of uh, security uh, multiple hops along the trail at different layers and it's pretty secure excellent secure so another feature is role level security if you think about it if you think of a sales department you may have a director a manager and a, and a salesperson so obviously a director would want to see everything the manager and and they do offer this role level security which is very easy to implement and there's your role level security uh, we also have dynamic data masking for sensitive data uh, we have firewall which we can secure the data uh, in Power BI, we have to think about data, folder structure, permission, data refreshes, and Excel. How do you want who to view what? So that's all has to be thought through. We also have migration of code deployments, you know, moving it from dev to QA, QA to prod. Uh, tickets have to be created, leverage the control, change control, and then the management ticketing system so you can see who did what when. Uh, also, you want to ensure that you have consistent naming conventions um, in all these different tools, SQL, SSIS, uh, SQL Server objects, you want to make sure they're clean, consistent, perhaps Pascal casing, Camel casing. Within your tabular model, you make it user friendly. Uh, so there's a variety of security thoughts and concerns you must implement. Also, audit, alert, and monitoring so you can keep track of the flow of the lifecycle of the data. Source control is a key one. If you lose your source control, that's not good. So you want to make sure that um, you incorporate source control and apply notes to say who did what when. And obviously, DevOps is gaining traction. I'm starting to um, interrogate this quite a bit there's a lot of potential on the Azure side for deploying continuous development and integration continuous integration through DevOps it's tremendous it's a it's a great tool I'm just getting started with that one there but I, I love it and I think it's going to be built into all the projects going forward in Azure so this is the second video of data governance if you have any questions or like more information on Azure specifically or Power BI, uh, click on below, email us, or talk to us on the phone. We appreciate your time, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.